Hey, what's up, guys? It's Craig Syracuse from Walk in Faith. I'm sitting down with a good friend of mine, Tyler Noble, who I haven't seen in a long time. And Tyler has been friends a long time, and I came across uh, some of his posts the other day. He's in Minnesota, Minneapolis, and Tyler was protesting. Um, and one, during the live video, he encountered uh, an oil tanker, right? I guess this would be the proper terminology. And I wanted Tyler to just explain to us what his what he's been witnessing in Minnesota, Minneapolis during these protests for the late George Floyd. So Tyler, thank you so much for sitting down with me. I know it's been difficult to communicate and stuff, but if you could just tell us a little bit about your experience and what you've encountered over the last few days. For sure. And thank you for this this platform because you know I think it's really important that people do see this other side and get the truth about what's going on there and not just listen to the media and not just see pictures of destruction because there's so much there's so much beautiful stuff happening neighborhoods getting together people coming together um, to take care of each other um, I, I'm from originally from New York but I've been living in Minneapolis for about six years now and it's a beautiful city uh, it's it's pretty diverse in the in the city itself and in the city itself it's progressive but um, the further you go on out it it changes a bit um, and we'll get to that. But uh, so I've been, I've been protesting any day that I can. Um, and it's always a nice peaceful demonstration. And i had been to a few, I had actually experienced a little bit of uh, what had become the riot that then overtook the police station and whatnot. And, um, that was, that was pretty frightening. And I wasn't a part of that, but I was there to experience it. Um, but then I was at, uh, I was at a few protests that were, they were just amazing. The, the one, that same group that wanted protesting where the oil tanker came in, we did a similar protest. Um, I think it was Friday or something like that. And we met at the U S bank stadium. And I think it started with something like 400 people wow. and some speakers. And it's, it's all about, you know, just love and coming together. And we walk through the city, we go over the bridge into Northeast Minneapolis, and then we enter the highway in a very safe manner. And, um, and people were supportive of it. People, people veered off to the side and they were honking their horns and cheering for us. Let me just ask you a question, just for someone like myself, that's not familiar. So you, this is all organized. Somebody sends out, is it through social media? Is it through uh, WhatsApp? Yeah. How do you guys communicate and everybody meets? If you could just take me to that, just so I can understand exactly how you guys all sort of came together as one. For the most part, it's through social media. Um, you know, there's just like a, an event, an event page, but that's where it's been getting dangerous too, because people are hacking and mm -hmm. there are actually some uh, white supremacists or just evil people that are setting up fake meeting places and now we're all afraid of um, protests getting infiltrated, which they certainly are. And even like community meetings, we're talking about it. We're like, guys, just be vigilant because we understand that we're trying to keep each other safe, but there are most likely people within us that are trying to get information to work against us. And we're not just talking about working against protests, we're talking about working against our neighborhoods, just being safe because people don't wanna, their property destroyed and they don't want things set on fire. And it's not the people from the neighborhoods that are setting their own stuff on fire, trust me. So now, okay, so now you organized, you met at the stadium and then you started to walk onto the highway, which, what day was this? Was this Friday? And this, was, uh, this was last Friday. This was the first time we, we took the highway. We took I-35W. And Craig, Craig, it was amazing. It, like the, the power of, of people, you know, good people. They weren't causing any destruction. But when people come together, that, that power that they can have, and we're trying to use that to do good, right? Um, to get justice for George Floyd. Um, so, and you saw, that, like I said, these people were supportive. The people, uh, for the most part, people were aboard. And we walked down the highway for about an exit or so. We got off the highway. And I was riding a bicycle, so I would help lead, and we would block off the bicyclists and skateboarders. We'd, head the, the protest and block the streets and then let the, 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 the rest of the group come through. And at that, that point, I don't know, we had thousands. We went from 400 to thousands. And sometimes that's the thing too. 
people will just jump on in, mm -hmm. you know, or they're, they're, they're looking for uh, a way to get involved and they'll, they'll jump right into the protests. And then we, we stopped at U.S. Bank Stadium. And I think that was the first night that they had curfew, the curfew went in effect. So then um, a couple speakers came on and um, I forgot the name of this guy's group, but one of the men that heads this, uh, you know, he's just being very responsible for all of us. And he's like, guys, curfew is in effect tonight. So please get home. And somebody was like, ah, forget curfew. Cause there are people that are, you know, a, a little, a little, a little crazy about it. You know, they're just a little excited, overexcited sometimes. And he's like, no, you can't forget curfew. Get your butts home. Wow. You know, we're going to be, we're, we're going to respect this and we're going to come out again tomorrow. And we're going to, we're going to do this again. Um, and I, I was involved in another protest the day after where I did see some anarchist looking people, people that we know now that there's these boogaloo boys and they wear like Hawaiian shirts and some people, some people carry guns. Some people are, are just trying to, they're coming there to be destructive. Um, and we're supposed to keep an eye out. Like we're, we're, everyone says, don't be on the offense, but definitely keep your eyes open for these people that might be trying to infiltrate, instigate and whatnot. And on Saturday, I saw a group of young white men that, you know, I'm trying not to judge them, but at the same time, they weren't, they weren't there in support. They weren't chanting with everyone. They were kind of on the outskirts and they had the Guy Fox masks on and, um, but they weren't wearing them. So they weren't even wearing like uh, face masks at all. They were just kind of, just kind of being creepy in the corner and stuff. So I just kept an eye on them for a while until I left. Um, but I don't think anything uh, happened at that protest that night, which happened, it started in, uh, I think Nicolet Avenue and 34th Street. And then it ended at Cup Foods, right where, um, George Floyd was murdered. Um, and Craig, uh, that's maybe like we, we could, we don't just use the word protest because I think that's what, um, you know, people are getting lost in it too. It, it ended at Cup Foods and it's just this convergence of people um, just coming together and they're, they're grilling and giving out free food, looking out for each other and giving out free water. Are you thirsty here? Um, and just having beautiful speeches about coming together and, and getting justice. Um, so that was Saturday. And Sunday, as this, uh, that group from Friday came together, we, um, we headed down the highway, but dude, there was, I think it was like 9,000 people or something like that. So it was a tremendous amount of people, all, all, all of Minnesota, all of Minneapolis. This was no one type of person. And nobody, nobody, nobody was thugs, but it was everybody. Um, and we had so many people that we went up both sides of the highway. Uh, again, very peacefully. And um, I wound up on the side that was going against traffic. And there was a good number of people in front of me. And there was uh, the cars that were still trickling through. They were led to veer to the side to get off of the exit and they were going super slow like two miles an hour and they were all honking their horns some of them were you know getting out of the car and cheering and you're like yeah great like everyone's in support of this everyone's in support of this there are those weirdo creepy evil people that come into minneapolis to destruct our property and our businesses and whatnot but the majority of everybody is behind us because they know it's peaceful so that's happening. We do another kneel down because there was like three points we were going to do. A, we were going to kneel down and, and, and pray and whatnot. And we kneel down. And from what I understand, we were waiting for the mayor. The mayor was supposed to come. And I believe we started walking again. And all of a sudden, there's just this mad rush people are just backing up and stumbling into each other and you have nowhere to go because you're just surrounded by people. And it happens so fast. And I don't know what's on the other side of the people. I just, I know that it's so, there's something really dangerous and, and everybody's shuffling and, and kind of tripping over each other. And I'm kind of like stumbling over this bicycle 
on the grind meet, and then she sort of falls down on this bicycle on another bicycle that's right next to the uh, divider, and um, at which point, like, I, I have to get up because my leg's kind of in jeopardy, and then you have to snap out of it and snap out of survival mode because there's like a person, and she was going to get trampled, man. She was toast. She was on her back, and everyone's coming, and then me and this other guy, I think. Uh, we we grabbed each of her arms and we we lifted her up and propped her up on the guard um, divider, and um, so at that point my 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 mind went from not just survival but like I have to like think about other people too, so I helped a couple other people up onto the divider, and then at that point it seemed like most people were there. There was nobody in like my close vicinity, um, and then the truck's coming. Now it's coming slow. It it had slowed down by this point um and uh people were jumping on it people were trying to get it to stop because he was still going and people we didn't know if he ran over people it looked like he had hit people but the, the point was is that he was still going and he could still hurt people um so there, i saw uh there was a woman or a girl i don't know how old she was she was on the back of the tanker on the, the top back of it riding it like understand how it, you know, intense that had to be for her to be like, I need to jump on this thing. We need to stop on the front or wherever they could and throwing bikes in front of the truck to get it to stop. And, um, you know, to be honest, I, I threw something at it, but it wasn't in, in, in order to hurt him. It was because, guy, you have to stop. So I think that's what happens sometimes too. People are, pe people are peaceful, but once someone, is coming through with a truck you're you're in defense mode now yeah or if cops are I'm doing going. something to you you might get in defense mode um and then it just escalates from there so so um, not, i mean the the, tanker, the video that you had i i had to watch it several times and I, I couldn't believe it it reminded me a lot of the la riots um i think it was a it was a tractor trailer and mm. it reminded me a lot of that but obviously you know the, it wasn't to that extreme, but now the police department, when I saw that video too, and I saw a few different videos, same thing. I just, it, it really heavy on my heart when I see these videos, but I'm not there and I'm not in the, in the environment. I'm not experiencing it. You were there as well. What was it like for you? And how did something like that start? I mean, I saw the, the police with the bicycles and they started to barricade and then that ended the tear gas, the rubber bolts. And then I don't know if it was the next day or the same day, it was I think, set on fire. How does that happen? Like, how does that escalate from one to the next? And what was it like for you to be there and experience that? You, you're talking about the, tr the oil truck incident, right? Well, the, the, the police department in Minneapolis. Oh, when they took the police department? Yeah, what was that like for you? I mean, I mean you were there, you said, right? Yeah. You saw that yeah. on video. What, like, how does it go from, like, how does it escalate to that? And what was the experience like for you? Well, I, I wasn't there the whole day. And I'm, from what, what I know, from what I see, the, the protests are very different from riots. People that are at riots, they may have trickled in from protests, but people go to protests because they're, they're standing up for their beliefs and they want justice. And um, then the protest is over. What happens after that is something else that's separate. And there might be some people that are overzealous. There might be some people that are intoxicated for sure. Um, there's people from the outside. So when I got to the, the, the precinct uh, or around that area, Lake Street and uh, Minnehaha, I believe, where the, like, the fire started and the riots started and whatnot, um, I got there at like 7 or 8 p.m. last what was Thursday or Wednesday, whenever that happened. And, um, and I, got, I rode my bike down there and I'm just looking at this uh, shopping center that's it's full of people and there's a fire, a car on fire in the middle. And, um, and then th there's a, a dude, a, white, a young white dude who turns out, he told me a lot of stuff about him. Uh, he was 28 years old and he, made a friend there and and then i'm just standing there and just trying to figure all this out and this older woman came and like kind of joined us there and he's just openly very casually telling me how he was there last night and him and his buddy were looting and that he lost his buddy and 
that cub foods probably doesn't have anything left in it. Uh, so they're just coming. And he's, he told me, I forgot which area he's from, but he's from like 20 minutes outside of the city. So he's from the burbs. So people are just coming and causing trouble. They're not there. They're not there to, to stand up for, for, the, for the rights. They're not there for the justice. They're not the same people. Um, so there's a lot of people that are coming from the outside and, and they think it's a party. I, there was an endless row of cars coming through the shopping center, endless, it never stopped. People just uh, enjoying themselves. Clearly some of them were drunk. Um, so they just, it's like a, a, a spectacle for them. Um, and then I made my way through it and it was, you know, it was scary, man. I don't know what's going on. Um, and, and I did see other people just taking stuff from stores and I, I didn't see, honestly, I didn't see any black people, uh, taking anything at that point. Um, so I walked closer, uh, towards the precinct bit and they're just banging down the door. They're trying to knock down the door. And I was just like this, wow, how is this real right now? I mean, there's been a lot of that lately, right? With COVID and, you know, it feels like every day it's like, is this a dream? Is this, is this real right now? Are these people actually taking down a, a police station? And then I just, I see Molotov cocktails flying. Like, yeah, I've seen enough. This is, I gotta get out of here. This is dangerous. Well, at that point, were there any, did the police abandon the location? Yeah, the police yeah they, they had abandoned it. So, so, I mean, it's, it's so much the process. No matter how many times I've seen the video and how many times I talk about it and reflect on it, it's like a movie. It's, and it's happening in, I think it's over 100 cities. And what's, what's interesting is, like, you're protesting. You're there because you want to see change. You want to make a difference. And it's, we clearly know that there are people out there that are not there for that reason. I mean, I, watching Manhattan as they, they try to take over Macy's, they've – They've looted stores, I mean, endless stores, burned endless stores, and it's so upsetting to everyone. But So I know you said it already, but there is a distinct difference between what you're doing protesting versus the looting. What is, Absolutely. So, like, how, what is the difference, right? Just, to, just enlighten me with the difference, and why are, we, why are we mostly seeing the looting? You know, I mean, that's, that's, what, that's what the media does, right? They give you drama, right? They, they, they give you what you, you, they think you want to see. And, and shoot, man, people do. They, they, they want to see the gore, the death, the, the violence, right? But, you know, and that's why I, I don't think it's so important to show pictures of the destruction. Um, yes, there's destruction. But when you see protesters and then you see pictures of destruction, then I guess you do, maybe your brain does want to kind of pair that together. They're like, Oh, they must've done it. That's a big group of people. But I think that the destruction is being caused by very small groups in Minneapolis. People have witnessed these groups, people coming in out of state cars or unlicensed cars and throwing Molotov cocktails and things like that. There's, you know, death threats, and people are leaving death threats letters and things like that. So some of our events are peaceful organizing events, neighborhood organizing events are being threatened. Wow. And we're just trying to keep each other safe. Um, you know, some of these uh, events are literally neighborhoods coming together to try and keep each other safe from the violence that's coming in from the outside. Um, so it's 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 completely separate. We're go, we're we the peaceful people. Uh, the majority of people just want justice. What's right, right for for justice for yeah. George Floyd because that man murdered that man murdered him. Um, but there's white supremacists. There's anarchists. There's young kids that are just being dumb. There's a lot of young kids. There's videos. A, na a native group from uh, Minneapolis. There's a lot of a large native population here. Um, they caught, I think, three or four. There's a video out there. Three or four high school uh, white kids um, from Wisconsin that were looting a store, and they didn't. They didn't do. They didn't physically harm them. They sat them down. 
They took their phone numbers. I think they called their mothers. Um, so I, you know, it's, I think it's really important that we keep on letting people know uh, that the neighborhoods are coming together. People are coming in droves with donations during the day. People are coming, everyone's like, what, what can I do? What, how can I get uh, donations to the protesters or just to the people that are suffering from this? Uh, the churches are even some of, there's a church that my friend is working at that um, sometimes they have to shut down donations because they can't house any more of it. Um, and um, like I said, we were at the protest and people are just giving away free food. They're having cookouts. Um, it, this is people coming together for the good. And they're making it seem like it's bad. And that's so sad because it's, it's so far. So why, do you, why do you think this, I mean, I, I don't know the answer. Like, why do you think this, this small group, I mean, especially Manhattan, I mean, I, saw, I watched hours of it yesterday and today. Why do you think this small group is going around or even traveling from other states? I saw it today in California, people were traveling hundreds of miles to California just to loot like, because they can, you know, go to high-end stores. Why are they doing this? Why is this happening? Well, I think it's a lot of reasons because there's a, there's a lot of different types. There's a lot of different types of people that are doing this. There might be some people that have been trapped in their houses, apartments for months, and they're mad. They're mad at the government. They're mad at everything. They're mad at life. Maybe, you know, they're teenagers and they, they want to create havoc. Um, there might, there's, they don't forget, man, there's criminals all the time, right? Our country, our world is filled with criminals and people that are hungry and starving. So maybe there are, there, there's people that are just maybe a little more criminal. Uh, maybe there's people that are actually hungry and they, they need stuff. Uh, then there are anarchists. There are, there are those young types that are just, just want to wreck stuff. And then there are the white supremacists and those are uh, the, they're, I don't think they're the looters. Those are the ones that are coming and trying to set our, our neighborhoods on fire. Because come on, why, why in these lower income neighborhoods would they want to set their, their own businesses on fire, the same places that they, they shop and things like that? Um, it just doesn't make any sense. So you're dealing with many different people doing it for lots of reasons. And just let's not forget that people have been inside and they, they want to get out really bad. You're right. And, 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 they're, and, they're, and they're going into stores and they're drinking and they're getting, they're coming out with more bottles and they just. I saw, I saw on, online and I have a picture of him, a uh, man, I don't know his name, but he was, he's funding a lot of these riots. And, you know, we mm. saw pictures and video of um, bricks being delivered mm. and you see the exchange of money. Um, and he's, oh, yeah. uh, he's supporting some of these riots. It's real. I mean, I don't know. I don't know what the answer is. I mean, until we get to the root of the problem, um, you know, obviously it's, it's, this is something that's been going on for hundreds of years. It's racism, it's, but it's deeper than that. It's sort of within the culture of society. It's something we need to address. And I don't think violence, I think most people would agree is the answer. I think what you're doing, the, the protest, justice, coming together in unity, you know, regardless of diversity, regardless of gender, regardless of anything, religion, background, you're coming together as one, as unity for justice. And I think that's what we need to do. But unfortunately, there are a lot of people, like you said, that are out there that are just there to, to wreak havoc. So now mm -hmm. what's the future? I mean, when have you reached your goal? Um, is this going to happen again tonight and tomorrow? I mean, you know, it's, it's scary. It's like you said, it's like living a movie. I cannot yeah. believe what we're witnessing. And it's not in just Minnesota. This is everywhere. You know, what's the end? What's tonight? What happens tomorrow? How do we get back to normal? Will we ever get back to normal? Yeah. Well, Craig, let's not forget that, you know, this is just a taste of what some countries go through or, or even worse, you know, on a daily basis. So, you know, uh, I'm just in this, this awe of like, you know, I've, you've seen that stuff on TV, but mm -hmm. now it's, it's really close to home and it's, it's intense, man. And I, I really feel for the rest of the world that goes through this. Um, but I think what first, what we, what we want is 
um, obviously justice for George Floyd, which means that that cop needs to be prosecuted and tried as he accordingly as he should. Um, I understand that like, you know, there's there's blue, blue blood, right? Like cops look out for each other and um, you know, they want to make him look, they want to make George Floyd look like he was the bad guy or something. How do you do that? The man was on his, on his belly with, with a knee on the back of his neck. Uh, how can you make him look like the bad guy? Or now they're just trying to, you know, make it look like he, he died for other reasons. But in, in any case, like everyone saw the video. You can't, you can't dance around that. So that cop needs to be, you know, tried fair, you know, according to, to what he did, uh, which is murder. It's not murder in third degree or he knew, he knew that he was hurting that man. Um, and yeah, unfortunately those other cops, like, yeah, he was your buddy. He's your, your blue blood or like, however you want to look at it, but you, you let it happen. Mm -hmm. And, um, personally, Craig, I saw pictures. I won't watch the video. Yeah. I don't, I don't need that in my brain. I don't, I don't need that in my brain at all. Um, but you know, let's, let's get the, the justice and let's get, get these cops in jail. No bail, no bail. He should not be outside right now. That cop should not be outside. Um, and then like, that's, that's a step in the right direction. Maybe this is the catalyst, mm -hmm. you know, that moves us forward, that gets us where we need to go as a people to get to, so that people, everyone can have the same rights so that we can stop being, you know, so racist. And, um, you know, this isn't the first murder and the first death and the, our first taste of racism. It's been going on too long. Unfortunately, sometimes these, these kinds of things are, you know, you gotta like hit your rock bottom. Maybe this is our, this is our rock bottom. Um, and once, justice is served because it's going to have to be um we did awaken i think that's the thing like we kind of awaken these these evil beasts as well you know these white supremacists and things like that so they might continue to come they seem to be pretty angry they're the angry they're the real angry ones oh actually yes because i um wh when there was the news footage of the the truck yeah. speeding into a group of people there was live comments coming down the feed and two of them one, one said something like this is what the thugs deserve and then another one said I, I wouldn't have stopped I would have went 60 miles an hour so who's the evil who's you know who, who who's committing crimes who are the terrorists here the protesters aren't terrorists the people that are um that are, are um, sorry, sending death threats, sending, you know, vi doing violent acts, committing violent acts, setting fire. That's terrorism. That's terrorism right here. But I don't know, why aren't, like that, that's who we really need to go after. And I, I, I don't think that they're gonna stop. I think we've kind of awakened that beast. And I, there's, you know, people are saying that they, they want this, this race war. And that's a whole other thing to get into. I don't know um, how true that is, but uh, we definitely stirred up some stuff and we, we stirred up some hatred. And we've seen in the past couple of years how some of that hatred has come up. And uh, it seems like they, they think it's, a, it's okay, that hate is okay. Yeah. I mean, I think you're right. I think they, in a sense, they woke up a sleeping giant. And, and because we're all at home, all full of anxiety, stress, and stores are closed, the pandemic, there's so much going on at once. I mean, I pray, I really do, that this stops. I wish, I pray that people come together and just, just talk about it and see eye to eye. But you're right. If there are these groups that are out there that have no desire to stop because they're not looking for peace, they're looking for destruction, I don't know how they're going to stop. I really don't. I, I don't know what the answer is, but I am, I'm happy that you're out there, you know, because I don't think I would be. I was actually on a side note, invited to go to the city tomorrow and the next day and maybe speak and, and just try to help. And, and I'll be honest, I'm afraid, you know, I have a family, you know, I'm afraid of the pandemic. Yeah. I can give you 16 reasons, but 
you're out there. You're on the front line. You're, you're trying to make change. You're trying to make a difference. And I commend you for that. And, you know, I just pray just be safe because, you know, it's dangerous. And if there's one thing, Tyler, after people watch this, what's the one thing you hope they walk away with after watching this interview that you can enlighten them with? One, that the protesters are, are out for the good of everyone. And they're not, we're not violent. We do not want to be violent. We want to end violence. This is what this is about. We're trying to stop the violence. And um, let's, let's uh, extinguish racism. Let's come together. And it's, gonna it's really going to take us coming together even more. It's going to take a lot of community organizing and neighborhoods coming together and having a lot of dialogue to, to keep these, the, the evil out of our neighborhoods. You know, like I, I've got phone numbers of oh, people in my building now, you know, we're, uh, we're just coordinating, neighbors are coordinating, watching, looking out for each other. Uh, so it's just m more of that. Um, really, let's come together and, and try not to be scared. I know, I know, Craig, trust me. I know, it's scary. I've, I've, when I went to protest in the past, I've, I've been scared. Um, and I've been going by myself and it's, it's scary, but... Um, if, if, if we all let that keep us inside, nothing, nothing would change. So, but you're doing something, you're still doing something and keep, let's, let's get the word out and let's, uh, let's let people see the other side. So take pictures of people coming together, you know, show the, show people the beauty, not just the destruction. I agree. I, you're right. We all can do our part. Tyler, I mean, I, it's, I'm, I'm so happy we were able to speak today. Yeah, I mean, man. I'll continue to watch on social media. Guys, this was a very heart-wrenching episode just for me to do it and to sit down with Tyler. And we all can do our part. I mean, whether it's prayer, whether it's posting positive reflections on Instagram, social media, um, reaching out to a family, friend, loved one. Just remember that what Tyler's doing is he's looking for change in a positive way. They're not creating destruction they're not destroying anything they're just there for love peace and unity so we can all learn from tyler tyler it's a pleasure i love you my brother it's been a Thank long so time much. since i've seen you Thank and guys always remember you have the ability to inspire and evangelize through words and actions god bless you peace